If you thought the back rooms weren't horrifying enough, I made a VR game that makes them even more terrifying. This is my friend John. Yeah, hold on, I had a heart. That was scary as hell. Now the back rooms are made up of thousands of levels, but according to this wiki, the level you're most likely to find yourself in is the lobby. It exists in non-Euclidean space, meaning you can run for hours and still find yourself in the exact same spot. I figured out a really cool way to code this that will completely freak out the players, which I'll explain in a minute, but to start, I had to begin by laying out the geometry. Now all the rooms of this level contain the same mono yellow wallpaper with overhead fluorescent lights that emit a buzzing sound. I set all these up and then added a bunch of post-processing to really make the lights pop. The only thing that was bothering me was that the carpet was a little too dark, so I channeled my inner phase clan and just pulled the rug out to replace with a lighter tone. Now Kane Pixels, who's the creator of the viral backrooms found footage video recently said in an interview with oh, Wendigo. The, the, the main thing that really got me, this one was horrible. It gave me a heart attack. The cameraman shadow, sometimes it lags its position as the camera's moving. And then all of a sudden the camera humanoid shadow thing jumps in front of the camera instead of behind it. And it, it's just, it's horrible. <laughs> I wanted to try to recreate this feeling of dread that there's something right behind you, so I added some audio sources behind the player that follow him around, and then I wrote a script to occasionally play footstep sounds on them. But there's not actually anything behind them. We're just doing a bit of gaslighting. Now, if the player does figure this out, we're gonna turn up the heat a little bit by playing a breathing sound effect immediately behind them. But what if the player gets smart and realizes that there's not actually anything following them? Are you sure about that? But back to that non-Euclidean space. I set up portals so that when the player walks through, it teleports them to another location. I then set up cameras at the exits of each portal and render what they see on a fake screen behind the starting one. Then, I match the camera's position with the players to completely hide where the portal is and at this point you have no idea where it starts and where it ends. So for example here you see our broken chair, you can walk through, and then you see the broken chair, and then you walk through. I also intentionally kept the portals pretty close to each other so there's this brief moment where the player can actually see a little movement. It seems to move in time with the player and that's because it's actually you, which just adds to the mind games a little bit more. And just to increase the heart factor a little bit, I added a collider that when the player walks through it, it sends a signal. And this signal tells an entity it's time to spawn. But it'll disappear if you get too close. Now remember when I allegedly said it was going to be VR? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Good thing I definitely know how to do that. 13 hours of Unity tutorials later, but now I have a pretty good understanding of all the packages that I need, so I got our first mechanic implemented. Now, instead of having to press buttons to move like a total loser, you now swing your arms. And the faster you swing your arms, the faster the player moves. Also, I added this fun animation so you can walk around and look like an ape without having to lose any money on GME. But what actually makes a VR game fun? To learn the answer to this question, I downloaded some of the most popular ones on Steam. Beat Saber's definitely the GOAT, and let's be honest, we're all downloading modded songs. I mean, the house music they have is pretty good. R.I.P.Z's. In Super Hot, when you stop, time stops. The speed of the game is dependent on your body's movement. So you can just stop moving and dodge bullets like you're the CIA dodging responsibility for governmental instability in South America. I was actually pretty surprised by how much I enjoyed VR chat. Just talking and goofing with other people, it was pretty fun. But dude, some of the skins had physics. Shit was wild. Although the graphics and the mechanics of these games are pretty simple, they have such a cool feeling that you can't replicate with only a 2D screen and a keyboard. I wanted to add something to our backrooms game that the player physically moves by moving their body. So I gave him a flashlight. It didn't really fit well into level zero since it's a relatively lit space, so I looked through the wiki and found a level that would be perfect. Level nine. Now level nine is known as the darkened suburbs. It's an urban landscape where the time of day is locked to midnight. After turning the brightness way down, I started by placing houses along a street. And also according to the wiki, the streets of level nine are the most dangerous aspect of this level. The wet, unpainted asphalt roads take on the consistency of quicksand. 
I spent some time adding volumetric lighting to the street lamps that flicker on and off, and some color lighting to add to this surreal ambiance. But the streets are not the only thing that's out to get you here. Oh, no, 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 no. Now, this level is ranked as a class 5 survival difficulty. It comes with a warning that this level should be avoided at all costs, like you're an underage Nickelodeon actress and we're talking about Dan Schneider's trailer. Allegedly. Expect to find it unsafe, unsecure, and infested with entities like skin stealers and smilers. I found some nice assets on Sketchfab that I'm going to yoink for this project, and after dragging them into Unity, I wrote some code to make them randomly spawn and pursue the player. They needed the animations though, so after adding those, I have the power of God and anime on my side. it's pretty terrifying to see them coming out of nowhere. The only thing that can prevent getting spaghettioed by those bloodthirsty creatures nope. is the shining of the flashlight directly nope. on them. You need to keep your head on a swivel and constantly nope. watch out for entities approaching. Oh, but I forgot to mention, flashlight's batteries are dying. No, 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 wait, 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 wait. So I wrote some code that gives the light a chance to start working again each time you give it a shake. Nope. It's kind of a neat mechanic that involves nope. some sort of bodily movement instead of just pressing a button to turn it back on. In order to find the exit of this level, you'll need to follow painted red arrows that are scattered throughout the seemingly endless, okay, maybe not the most seemingly, landscape. Anyway, I decided to grab my friend John and put him to the test. This is so cool. The running's very easy. This is, no, this, it works really well, actually. I feel like it's good. And you don't have to shake too hard. You can, like, move pretty decently. I feel like it's nice. I'm waiting. Ooh. Oh, shit. <laughs> Yo, hold on, I had a hard time. Oh, shit. Get the chair away from me. Get away from me. That was scary as hell. Now what? That's the first one, and then like footsteps, and it gets louder, and it stops. I feel like that would really scare the piss out of me, because that did. Oh, I actually turned around before another one. I swear to God, there's another one. It's cool to get outside feedback from someone that doesn't normally play video games, and he actually had a bunch of pretty fun suggestions as well. Can you make like levels and shit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hell yeah. But yeah, you can do like some level one, and then have like slow monsters or whatever, and you can have like a safe place. Mm hmm. Yeah. To like a certain point in the game, and you can have like guns. So I like that game, so you can like shoot them as well, and or like find guns inside the houses and shit. There's so many uh, possibilities. This is cool. Thank you, thank you. Hell yeah. If you do want to see it on Steam, definitely let me know by liking and subscribing to the channel. I don't really plan on publishing it as it was just a fun demo project to lose a few friends that I have and learn the basics of VR development so I can add it to my main game, Tavern Team. Uh, you can see devlogs of that on the channel. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you later.